Signing day has come. Spring practice is over with. Now the Hornets are getting ready for fall camp. And the players knew the goal from the jump. It's BCS or bus. Anything less than a New Year's Day bowl game is a disappointing season. Now with that being said, we had to make some changes specifically on the offensive side of the ball if we're going to make this a successful season. Hopefully, we can go undefeated. The first thing is this. Bobby Newton is now being demoted to the backup quarterback. He has let us down so many times. And his junior year, which was season four, was the worst year he's had as the quarterback for Alabama State football. So Bobby Newton will be backing up this guy. Meet Chase Herring. He's a transfer from the Duke University Blue Devils. Yeah, you know I'm a Carolina basketball fan. We don't mess with them. But anyway, this ain't basketball, this football. So you see his passing rating. He has 89 throw power, 78 throw accuracy, 76 overall. A little bit faster than Bobby Newton is though. So we're going to be rolling with this cat on the center, Chase Heron will be our starting quarterback. So the rest of the depth chart looks like this. We got Chase Heron coming in to take over. Bobby Newton will be backing him up. Peter Burnett will be third string. Peter Burnett is looking to be the man by the end of this season and getting ready for season six. Trey Tyler, he's going to be red shirting. We can probably get TJ Thomas in there somewhere. But look at 2008 for Bobby Newton. Only 72 completions on 169 attempts. He didn't even have 2,000 yards passing, but he did have 17 touchdown passes. Next, here goes some breaking news right here. Billy Logan has left the team for undisclosed reasons. He had a talk with Joseph Cooley, and he said he had another calling somewhere else. I know he's still enrolled in school, but we wish Billy Logan nothing but the best. But the man at running back this season will be Gene Speedy Singleton. This man is back for his senior season after having a talk with Coach Joseph Cooley about being the man at running back and increasing his draft status even higher. He comes into this season with high expectations and the Alabama State Hornet fans are so excited to see him play football that they just cannot wait for that first game. You're going to be seeing the schedule too later on on this video, so stay tuned. Also, look at the hype and watch list. Courtney Russell, the running back at Alabama, is at the top. A.J. Campbell, the quarterback for Purdue, in second. Down in LSU, you got Thomas Cook, the quarterback, former LSU running back, Gene Singleton, now with the Alabama State Hornets. And then finally, you have the wide receiver up there at Happy Valley, a.k.a. Penn State, Rudy Moore. So, it should be an interesting run. Now, Gene Speedy Singleton is our best running back by a mile. We got Leon Henderson backing him up. We're going to get Keon Peterson in there and get him some kind of reps. But remember, we got the true freshman running backs. Well, not true freshmen because both of them are red shirty. Monker and Harris. The two running backs that we got from this past class, both of them will be red shirting. But Gene Speedy Singleton will no doubt be the man at the running back spot. The others still have some growing to do. The running backs look like this. You got Tim Brown, big play swag Tim Brown. We're looking for him to be the man at wide receiver this season. He comes in in the depth chart at wide receiver number one. He had some big plays last season, had a stellar freshman year, but he has yet to cross that 1,000-yard mark as an Alabama State Hornet. Jason White is back, and he's looking for redemption. He separated his elbow in the loss versus Southern last year, and now he's back and looking to improve and get even better this year. But also look out for this cat right here, Ryan Thompson. The true freshman from Mansfield, Texas, 
We're looking for him to come in and make a big impact on this football program. With the departure of Kevin Scott, we now need some more wide right receivers to step up and become big time. Now, Ryan Thompson, he comes in with poor potential, but we're not worried about that. It's the discipline that I'm accepting. He has average discipline, so hopefully we won't have no problems with him. Plus, he's in the top 50 of the old spice list. So you got Tim Brown, you got Jason White, Ryan Thompson. Also watch out for Bob Smith. But Andrew Williams, there's just no hope for him. He won't improve. But also, Andrew Cope is back as our starting tight end. Bo Drew is now eligible to play the Georgia Bulldog transfer. That's right, another Georgia Bulldog transfer. Now his position is center, but we're gonna try to get him in a rotation. So you might see him playing some guard, a little bit of center. Don't forget, we still have our starter center once again. So here's the line. Brandon Ross, starting at left tackle. There goes Jesse Smith at 90 overall, left guard. Donald Green, back for his senior season under, well, snapping the ball to the quarterback. And then we make a little change right here. I believe we put Corey Brown right there. Yes, we did. And then, of course, we got Kareem Harvey on the right side. Still doing what he does best. I do like the future of our offensive line. Our offensive line is looking very bright. So let's go over to the defensive side of the ball. Blake Koch is back for his junior year. He's our best pass rusher on the defensive line. There's no question about that. He's 78 overall. And then we have Stucky and, of course, Mike Considine is back. Now, if there's any position that we need to improve on, it is no doubt on the offensive line. We really have to get better talent at these positions because right now, as you've been paying attention throughout this series, we haven't really gotten a lot of pressure coming from up front. We got Terry Carey uh, coming in. We're going to give him some action. You're probably going to see a lot of rotating on the defensive line this year. Because we're still trying to find that guy. No doubt it's Blake Koch. But we still need to find that guy that can dominate a game, dominate the line of scrimmage, and just take over. Blake Koch is nice, but he hasn't really done that consistently for us. So we're looking to get that done. Uh, I don't know why I went back to the offensive line right there, but okay. So there goes Scott McFarlane. He's back. And so is Big Ben Williams and Corey Johnson. The best part of this defense, though, is no doubt the linebackers. Lawrence Taylor Martin is back for his junior year, and this could potentially be his last season. But we also have this cat out of Tuscaloosa. Darius Snyder is now eligible to play. 76 overall, 82 tackle, 74 speed, and I think, yeah, the awareness was a 70. We're going to be rotating him. And as, as well as other linebackers in this defense because we are so good at this position. We have cats like Jamal Sykes, of course, Lawrence Taylor Martin. We got William Dorsey from Mississippi. And we still got Robert Boyd. And I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to do with Leon Hill. I still don't know that yet. But this is going to be an interesting season. Schneider is 84 overall, though. So yeah, we're going to put them in different formations and confuse the offenses of opponents. So the secondary. Jason Moore is back for his senior season. One of our ball hawks on one side of the field is coming back for his senior season and looking to go out with a bang. Cedric McNeil, he's back for his senior season. This cat's another ball hawk, but hopefully he can get some more interceptions in his senior year. Then we got the freshman All-American back for his sophomore season, Brad Anderson. The rest of the secondary looks like this. So we're going to put Cedric McNeil back at that second spot for his senior year. Then after that, Brad Anderson would no doubt be the man. As a sophomore, he's already at 82 overall. He might be up in the 90s before he's gone. Oh, uh, let's see. I believe that is it as far as our starting cornerbacks. Our secondary, we have Josh Sisk with the departure of Kyle Gray and um, Blake Clayton and Blake Rollins will be splitting time at strong safety. Gene Sigerton will be returning the kicks and the punts 
And then we got Sid McQueen as our punter. I forgot who our kicker was, but I will have that later on when we get ready for season five. So let's check out the All-American list real quick. Now I'm only showing the second team because Gene Singleton was the only Alabama State Hornet that was on any of these All-American lists. So I didn't even waste my time looking at the rest of them. So there goes Brock Hall of Bethune Cookman and Nick Newberry for North Carolina A&T. Now speaking of Bethune Cookman, they got some nasty offensive linemen that we're going to have to look out for when we play them again this year. There goes Ford from, uh, that looks like Florida A&M, the cornerback. I'm surprised there's not more Alabama State players, but it is what it is. I'm not tripping about that. It's just a preseason poll. Well, preseason All-Americans. Now, for the Max Swack second team, you're going to see Alex Mitchell is back for his senior season. There's a lot of studs on this list, man. It goes Travis Perry for Southern, Earl Hargrove, a cat that we tried to get to come to Alabama State, but he chose Alabama A&M instead. Chose to stay up there in Huntsville. Jason Osei is back, the uh, defensive end for Jackson State. There goes Allen Jackson. He's back for Southern. It's going to be an interesting season five. There goes Brad Anderson, second team preseason all swag. And how can you blame him after the season he had last year? There goes Lionel Fontenot, the free safety for Alcorn State. Antoine Williams for Southern Extreme Safety. So let's look at the first team. Marcus Jones is back for his senior season for the Rattlers. Named first team quarterback. And that looks like Lynn Anderson from Alabama A&M. Yes, it is. There goes Gene Speedy Singleton. Now, look at these two wide receivers. That's Mike Tyler and that's Alex Bird. Remember Alex Bird from season two? That man caught everything on us as a freshman. Had over 100 yards receiving on our, on our defense. Now, that's a team you need to watch out for. Them Alabama A&M Bulldogs. They could be a problem again this year, man. Like, I can't wait till we're playing for the Magic City Classic, even though it's not going to be in Birmingham. There goes Lawrence Taylor Martin. Martin. Anyway, so Lawrence Taylor Martin is back for his junior year, and there's a lot of buzz around him as far as being an NFL player. But there goes the MEAC, a.k.a. the Sun Belt. Now, look at this list. You're going to see a lot of South Carolina State, some Delaware State, and a good bit of Tennessee State. But for the most part, Tennessee State and South Carolina State are pretty much the favorites to be running this conference this season. With, of course, Tennessee State. Tennessee State probably, most likely, is the favorite once again to win this conference. I was hoping it would be more competitive, but of course, as you know in real life, Tennessee State plays in the Ohio Valley Conference. So we decided to ship them over to the MEAC in this dynasty to see how they do. And so far, they've been dominating that conference. So there it is again. The HBCU media has spoken once again. They're predicting the same thing from last season. A Magic City Classic in Detroit, Michigan. And then of course, in the Sun Belt, AKA the MEAC, you have the Tennessee State Tigers predicted to win the MEAC again followed by South Carolina State Bulldogs and the Delaware State Hornets. So with all that being said, you're probably asking yourself, what is our season five schedule looking like? AKA the 2009 season. So here it is. Game one, we're going down to Gainesville, SEC territory, and we're taking on the Florida Gators. Our first trip in program history to the swamp. Then we come back to the Gump Town and we're taking on a Big 12 team for the first time in the history of this program. The number 14 Iowa State Cyclones are coming to Montgomery. Then we're back on a roll for game three, another Big 12 opponent. The number eight team in the country, the Texas Tech Raiders. So that should be an interesting matchup, I hope. Game four, we're back in the Gump Town. We start SWAT play against those big bad braids from Lorman, Mississippi. The Alcorn State Braves come to the Gump Town. Game five, we're back on the road. 
three hours away in Tallahassee. Down the street from Florida State University, you'll find us taking on the Florida A&M Rattlers. I love Tallahassee. Game six, back in the gump town. The Bethune Cookman Wildcats come to Montgomery. And this time we're looking to keep that option running check. Game seven, we go down to Houston, Texas. A place I haven't been to in real life for a long, long time. And we're taking on the Texas Southern Tigers. Game eight. We're going back down to the bayou. We got to get our payback on the Southern Jaguars. Last year, we lost a heartbreaker, and this time, we're looking to break hearts down there in the bayou. The Magic City Classic is back for game nine, but unfortunately, it's not in Birmingham, it's in Montgomery. The puppies of Huntsville are coming to take us on. Game 10, Jackson, Mississippi. No, Coach Prime is not present, but we're still taking on the Jackson State Tigers. And then the last game of the season, the G-Men come to town from Grambling, Louisiana. The Grambling State Tigers come to the Gump Town for Senior Day. That concludes the schedule. And of course, you know, we got the SWAT Championship game in Detroit. So, where will Justin Chambers go? Where will Kevin Scott go? Will Cal Gray get drafted? Will Roddy Watts get drafted? Join us next time. We got the NFL draft for y'all cats. Because I'm pretty sure y'all anxious to see where everybody goes. See you there. Peace.